and welcome back to the Intelligent Conversations podcast. Today, I have the honor to speak with Phyllis Kamau. Phyllis is an immigrant from a foreign country and wants to share her story to help inspire others. She wants people to know that you can make it if you simply believe in yourself. So Phyllis, thank you for coming on today. I've been looking forward to finally getting you on. But um, I think it's only natural for me to kind of ask this, you know, to kind of open up. What's that story? What's the story of you immigrating? I think everyone's kind of interested. Sure. Thank you so much for having me, Josh. Yes, I've been looking forward to this episode as well. And yes, um, my name is Phyllis Kamau and I'm born and raised in Kenya. And then I immigrated to the U.S. to pursue my education and also my career. But more than that, what... um, Everybody has a story. And, you know, sometimes people just may not think they do have a story, but we all do. And for me, it's just like for a very long time, I I, I never used to speak up. I, I just dimmed my light and I never let my light shine because I was so afraid to, to speak up and feel rejected. That was my fear. I was afraid to be rejected. And so this caused me to have so much frustration such that um, over time it became like, okay, here I am, I'm working, I'm a pharmacist, I'm, I have a family, but I'm still, I'm not happy. And w- why is that happening? It's because I was still holding on to that fear and allowing other people's um, feelings towards what I have to say or share just compound me and just make me feel so small. So I just began, I just started putting my boundaries and I started speaking up. And since then I have been able to finally find my routine where I'm able to take care of myself. I'm able to take care of my family. I'm able to have space and um, and dream about helping my diabetes patients because that's who I want to help. I want to help them in their journey to be able to recover and be able to reverse their diabetes. That's that's cool. I think that's a awesome story to share there. And again, you kind of like shared like I think this is something I've been pointing out recently to all the listeners that are tuning in right now. People struggle. <laughs> You've got to struggle every like day and night. And I know we kind of we don't like it, but ultimately that's how you progress to, I think, a better level and improve yourself, improve your life. And that's something I think we all want. But uh, when did you kind of realize that things had to change? Like, was there like a specific event or did it was it kind of gradual and just like kind of what you've mentioned it was um it was gradual but then it got to a point um where and you know it happens a lot where and again my frustrations were also coming from from work so a lot of times we tend to bring that whatever situations are going at work we bring them at home whatever situation at home we take them to work and that just that just causes conflict so for me it caused so much conflict because i realized it got to a point where I realized, wait, who have I become? Because when I'm at home, I'm just not myself. I'm, you know, the way I'm reacting towards my kids and in my family, it's like, who am I? And so that's when I had to stop and think, wait, no, 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 this cannot keep going on. <laughs> so I, that was my turning point for me. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. And it kind of reminds me of something I actually kind of recently have been uh, developing as well. I re- so I read a book a while back. It's Atomic Habits, Habits by James Clear. And thing is, is I, I'm, I would say I'm slow to implementation. So like, I understood. I'm like, oh, that makes so much sense. Kind of like what you said. But then I was like, oh, actually doing it is another thing. And the thing that stuck out to me was how you had to like change your environment, right? Like when you're at home, you do these. When you're at work, you do this. When you're at, like we have that different uh, state of mind that we're in when we go to those places. So I finally been able to like change the environment more because I was just doing everything, right? Because of COVID and all that, we were working from home and we kind of just got all just stressed and all that. And that was something that happened to me. And I finally, I'm like, no, we need to quit working out from home. Let's just go to a gym. Let's, even though it's, you know, another, you're already stressed financially or whatever. You're trying to start a business. You're trying to do all these things. Let's just go to a gym. And that's actually, I think, helped <laughs> my productivity because it's like now you have that different state of mind. You're like, okay, I'm here to work out. I'm not thinking about anything else. And then when you go to work, oh, I'm here to work, nothing else. And then when you relax, I'm here to relax, 
nothing else. So do you do you have something similar that is that kind of what you do as well? Or have you read James James's book, Atomic Habits? Yes, I have listened to the audiobook. I'm, my preference would be to read the book, but then sometimes when you don't have so much time, so I've, I've listened to the audio. And yes, that's a great book for sure. Um, it helps you create those good habits you know, where we feel like we're lagging and we just don't know how to do it. And so that's a great book. I'd highly recommend that. And and exactly, just like you, Josh, that's the same thing I have, I have done where if I'm doing my business, I'm doing business. I'm not trying to do, especially because my business is I run it from home, but I'm trying not to do house chores at that time. If this is time I'm dedicating for my business, that's it. That's for my business. So I, I think you put it perfectly, that state of mind. That's definitely, that's the best way to put it, yes. Because it matters, your environment matters. What state of mind you're in, in which environment? Because, again, there's going to be so much conflict. So you have to be very intentional and have that that state of mind. Okay, I'm at work. I'm just going to do my work. I'm at home. I'm going to do. So, yeah, perfectly say. Thank you for saying that. I think that's, again, something I think a lot of people should, again, read the book. If you, I think by far it's one of the best books. For like, if you want to change your lifestyle, it's one of the best books and audiobooks as well. It's on Audible, all that. But uh, I think the one thing, right? Because I, I kind of mentioned this too, but and you've mentioned it too. I think there's like that period where it's really hard to like take the action, take that first step to actually do it. Once you're actually in it, I think maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but I think it's easier. <laughs> but it's the actual taking that first step that's hard. What's your suggestion, you know, for kind of those people that are like, oh, I just, I don't know how to take that first step or what's kind of your advice there for taking that first step? Yeah, that first step, that's always the hardest one. That's, that's the mountain right there. So <laughs> um, just like babies, you know, that first step is always the biggest one, but once they take it, they fly. <laughs> so yes. I think you have to ask yourself what's holding you back. Because you have to really look like, so like, for instance, like for you, Josh, again, I'm going to use your example. Um, you know, you wanted to work out, but then again, when you're at home, you find that you're not really putting your best effort there. So you have to sit back and, and analyze, OK, what's really the challenge? And you realize for you, yeah, it's because you're at home and that environment is not suitable for you. So it's the same thing. Any 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 habit, any lifestyle change you want to do, you have to. If you're, if you're struggling trying to get started, ask you sit, sit down and ask yourself, what's really holding me back? Because once you identify what's really holding you back, then you'll be able to figure out, okay, this is what I'm going to do. For instance, some people, the people that I work with, you know, of course, time is an issue. Even for everyone, time is an issue. We all only have 24 hours a day and we have so many things to do. So time is a constraint, that one I get. But then I sit and I ask people, okay, so when from, Tell me, kind of walk me through how you set up your day from morning to, to nighttime. Like, what what are you doing? And when we sit down and analyze our time, you realize there are pockets of time that you could actually utilize for something more productive. But then just, you so you just have to go back and analyze your time. Look at what, what are you doing? Where is your time going? Awesome. I think especially I, I like the point you made there where everyone has 24 hours, right? No matter where you are, everyone has the same 24 hours. doesn't matter who you are. Everyone has those same 24 hours. So I like to view it as it's it's a fair playing field for everyone. Everyone's got it, the 24 hours. It's Everyone's got the same chance to do something and, like you said, be productive. But let's kind of – could you maybe go a little bit more in depth? What is your – I mean, maybe it depends on – I guess it does depend on like the person you get, but uh, let, let me take a step back. Let's what what is your goal setting process? Because I think that's something I think people need to understand first before maybe we dive into this. Yeah, so goal setting process for me, I use the famous acronym SMART. That's the acronym that I use. So we we, we sit down and we make um, a specific we, the goal that we're making. We make it specific. We make it measurable where we can go back and measure. Um, we make it um, attainable. We don't want to make something that's unrealistic. So we make something that we know it's attainable. We make it realistic. And then we also put a time constraint on it. We don't want to make a goal where we say, for, for instance, like losing weight. 
if you make a goal of losing weight and you say, okay, this year of 2022, I'm going to, my goal is to lose so many pounds, but then you don't really have a specific way of getting there. You don't have a roadmap of getting there, then you're not going to make it. Like for now, we are already in July. If you had that, if that was one of the goals you made back in January, we're already in July. Where are you right now? Do you have a way to go back and measure? So that's that's the acronym that I use to make a specific a specific goal. I I agree. I think that that especially is important. And th- this is something I like. So for people like me, right? They're big dreamers, right? Like they're like, I have this. Like I want to do this and this and this and this. Like all this. Thing And you're right, you have to kind of specify, you have to get specific, you have to, it has to be measurable. I think measurable is actually one of the more important ones because how else are you supposed to know if you're succeeding, if you're actually getting it? Like, I think that's one of the most important ones. And then attainable, right? Can you actually do it, right? It might be too late, right? If I'm already graduated high school, say, I want to make the high school basketball team, right? It's like... It's already passed, right? It's got to be attainable. And then, so yeah, it has to be realistic. Can you actually do it? And then uh, time, right? You have to be able to make sure that you can get it. And it kind of uh, puts that pressure on you to actually go out and achieve those results that you uh, defined at the beginning. And I like to think of it kind of like, I mean, I know this is a horrible analogy, but I like to think of it like a video game, actually, because you slowly level up, right? You have different goals in order to reach level two. You have certain goals to reach level three. But that's the thing is you're still chasing, right? Like the levels never end, right? There's never going to be this state where you're just like, you know what? I'm fine where I am, right? It's just that never is going to happen. But it's that constant leveling up and different requirements while you're leveling up and i think that's where the goal setting is important it's okay to have right that big vision for yourself you need that this is where i see yes exactly (laughs) you definitely need that vision yes oh yeah i think the vision is important i think everyone has to have kind of that vision of what where they see themselves in 20 40 60 years and even 100 right who knows how long we'll live (laughs) from now so kind of can you kind of talk about like who who do you primarily work with? Like, what type of people do you work with on a day to day basis? So the people that I work with with my uh, diabetes coaching practice would be uh, type two diabetes women. That's who I mainly uh, I mainly work with, and I am also just now getting into. Um, my goal is to get into schools because type two diabetes is rising in a very fast rate amongst the kids, and so I believe we have to get these kids steered in the right direction. So that's one of my goals where I want to also work with schools and, and come up with, with programs that help these kids so they have they have a better chance of actually being able to, to fight diabetes. So where by the time they're, they're 20, they're not you know heavily dependent on medications, but just using lifestyle, that's, that's really one of my goals, just using lifestyle to help them overcome the challenges of what to eat, how to move, things like that. But so specifically type two diabetes women, that's who I work with. What, what kind of got you into that? What like motivated you to say, hey, this is something I wanna do. What's, what got you into that? So what got, got me into it is because as a community pharmacist, that was one of the things I observed. So patients would go see the doctor, the doctor writes the prescription, they come to me, they, they pick it up and then they go home and they do nothing. They do nothing because they have no guidance. They don't know what to do. They don't know. They wanna, you know, they didn't have any instructions. Okay, this is what you should be eating. This is how you you take your your medication. So they'll have that concept of okay, take your medications, but as far as what to eat and and how to move, what what lifestyle changes they need to do, they they don't have any guidance. And so a lot of them. So I I would keep seeing them coming back month after month, month after month, not getting better. They're getting sick. Getting more prescriptions. And also, mm-hmm. um, so that, that, that got me to, to where I wanted to help these people because I saw that gap where these people have no idea. They go home and they're looking constantly on the internet, but there's tons of information out there. So you don't know what's mm-hmm. true, what's not true. And to use that um, 
whatever information they find on the internet as a way to make a health decision. So that's why I felt I need to step in and help fill in that gap where I can be able to guide them and steer them in the right direction. And also particularly as a caregiver, my mom has diabetes. So as a caregiver, I also noticed what challenges there were, where were the gaps. So that also helped me as a caregiver to, to learn from her, her perspective what kind of situation so this is. So I've, I figured it's the same thing this, for my patients when they come to pick up prescriptions. It's the same thing. They go home and they sit down, they, they're lost, confused. I like that, uh, what you described there. I think that's, and that's a great uh, motivator. I think helping others is something that actually motivates us to do a lot, right? Because it it's just so fulfilling when you help someone else succeed. And when you were kind of talking through that, it kind of reminded me of, I think a lot of people, right? They try to, right? They just look for the solution, right? They're just like, just solve my problem now type of thing. Like, I think it's sometimes the best solution is actually create your own solution because you're you, right? You have specific needs. You have specific body type, right? And when talking with diabetes and all that, you have a specific, like, we are all unique. And that's like the wonderful thing about being humans, right? Is we're all different in our own fun way, right? But uh, I think with that, you need solutions that fit you, right? Like sometimes, right, we have these solutions that may serve everyone, but it may not serve you type of thing. And I think that's where you kind of fill that gap. So I kind of want to ask what, what are your ways of like creating solutions? What's kind of the way you do that? So one of the ways that I, I help create um, the solution for each 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 person, I just create a personalized solution for them. So it's identifying the root cause. So what is it that's that's probably gotten you there? Now for some people, yeah, we know genetics play a role, but more than that, our environment plays a huge huge role. Mm-hmm. So we we sit down and we deep dive in. What's the root cause? And once we identify what is the root cause, then we're able to make a solution that's specific for that person based on the root cause. Thank you for sharing that. I think that's something a lot of people can benefit from. I think if we identify that, you have to, you have to know what's causing the problem or what's causing you from being miserable or unhappy, whatever it is that you're desiring to change. I think, and again, we kind of mentioned this at the beginning, you, you got to want, right, in the first place. Like, I find some people, right, they don't even want to, right? And it's like, well, if you don't even want to, right, like, sorry, that's step one, bud. You have to actually want to. And, yes, I get it. It's hard, right? We it we talked about it. that first step. It's really, really hard to take. But um, you if you just want, like, just simply just want it, I think that really kind of helps you yeah if you want it bad you you'll do it yeah <laughs> it just depends how badly do you want this <laughs> yes I, and that's the thing i think that again another motivator there right i mean we sometimes you can be motivated right in helping others right but also you can be motivated hey i like i want this type of thing and right there's so many things that can motivate us so i want to ask i want to it, you don't have to answer this, but like what, what kind of motivated you to like what motivates you to get up and just help people every day? So for me, what motivates me is when I see them, when I see them succeed, um, because you see um, they're struggling as it is already. I, I know diabetes is it's, it's a challenge. It's a struggle that, that much I get. But to see someone excited to be able to wake up and maybe they before they they couldn't even because they were so afraid of eating, but now we've worked together. Now they've figured out, oh, this is how I can do it. So that gets me excited. When I see them When I see them succeed, it makes me excited. So it makes me want to help even more people because now I know they're getting it because once they get it, that's where my joy comes in, once they get it. Yes, I. that's cool. That's Thank you for sharing that. And again, yeah, I, I, I have to agree with you on that. When you see other people succeed, it's it's rewarding, right? You're like, I want to, obviously I'm good at this. I, I want to help more people type of thing. And honestly, I, I think that would solve a lot of issues that, <laughs> right? Like everyone's good at certain things and we should go out and, you know, 
share it, right? Like, hey, I'm really good at sharing this or I'm really good at helping people do this. You should help them do that. But then there's also things, right? Like I suck at some things. You probably suck at some things. And what you do, you go ask them for help and you go and find them and say, hey, like you're really good at this. How can you help me improve? Again, it's that leveling up. But I kind of want to get your thoughts on this. How do you surround yourself with people that will help you? Because I think the people you surround yourself with, right? The mentors, the coaches, whatever it is, that's a critical part of it. And how do you how do you kind of uh, surround yourself with those type of people so then you can continually level up? Yes, that's actually one of the best things I would say I've, I've done for my business was to invest in myself by hiring a coach. Um, because when you're in your business or <clears throat> when you're in your business, yeah, you can only be see so far because you're in it. But your coach has this ego view so they can see from different angles. And so that has been one of the best things I've done to hire a coach because a coach will see from that angle and that way they can steer you in the right direction. And also also having work, working with a coach, you also get to work with, say, like-minded people because they want, they want the best for you. So you have to surround yourself with like-minded people, people who are actually, they want to, they want to achieve more. Like I always tell people, you know, you feel like you're, you're, you know you were made for more, then you need to go for it. Because if you're just sitting in that crowd, that same, again, environment where you're not really growing, there's nothing happening, you're just there, then you can't achieve anything. So you have to surround yourself with like-minded people, people who will push you, push you to that next level. And that's what a coach does. They push you to that next level and get you to where you need to be. Yes, I think as you were kind of talking there at the the end, it kind of reminded me of a famous basketball player, Mike, Michael Jordan. You're probably familiar with him. He, uh, some people, I mean, there's a nice way to do it. Don't get me wrong, right? You can be nice when you push people, but it reminded me of like how he would push his teammates. And I'm like, and the results showed, right? Some people did not like him, but it showed. Same with Steve Jobs. Thankfully, we're getting to a point, right, where most people figure out, hey, like, let's find a nicer way to, uh, push people right like let's let's still have you know that urgency to like you know like hey you need to get this done and like push them but at the same time like let's let's be a little nicer and i think believe it or not some of those people that were maybe jerks actually kind of paved the way like hey that's actually gets a lot of stuff done so yeah i think yeah as much as we don't like them sometimes (laughs) they actually they can serve as motivators to actually get things done i think all of us as as, you know as creatures of habit yeah we want to sit in that comfort zone but you sit in that comfort zone you cannot achieve anything (laughs) so when you have someone who's pushing you or you know that gets you out of that comfort zone yes so something that kind of came to my thought so i know there's a lot of you know people that are maybe listening right now and they're maybe they all i bet they've already learned a lot but maybe there's uh let's say they're a college student, right? Like they're listening to this or they just graduated high school. They're kind of getting into things. And quite honestly, maybe they don't have money for like a mentor or uh, coaches or anything like that. And they're like, oh, but I want to improve my life type of thing, right? Like they just want to, they want to take that first step, right? But they're like, oh, there's something holding me back. And I'm going to use this as the intelligent question of the day. How, How do you motivate yourself from within so then you can take that first step so then down the road you can have those coaches mentors and people that can help you level up and grow as a person so for me it's um it has to go back with the vision um, because your vision plays a big role and um so if you haven't sat down and, and made your what's your vision board what does it look like what's in there what what do you where do you see yourself so for me that's what pushes me because i have young kids And so I want to create a life for them where, um, first of all, they have a a create healthy eating habits for them. And so Sasha, by the time they get to their their teenager years and, and, you know, and past that college and whatnot, they know they know the basics. I've done I've done my part. I've taught you the basics. So it's it's really the vision of seeing my kids growing healthy and, and also succeeding in life 
that pushes me, that wants me to do better because they're watching me. So they're looking at me. They're okay. Wait, mommy didn't eat her green beans, so I'm not gonna eat mine. So I have to be. I have to be. So I'm their role model. They're watching me. So I have to push myself, do the best things because I want them to copy that. I don't want them copying, you know, the bad stuff. I want them copying the good things. So it pushes me to be the best version, be my best self for them to be able to copy it. So even like those. Um, people who are probably like graduating high school is, you know, surround yourself with people like, do you have any role models? Do you have people that you look up to? Like kind of monitor, like watch what are they, what are they doing? Just kind of copy their behaviors. And that, t that pushes you and elevates your level up because then you're surrounding, you're, you're seeing, okay, this is, this is what they do. So I should be doing that. And so that's that's what pushes me where I want to be. I want to as a role model for my kids. So I want to be the best version of myself. Yes. I th wow. That was everyone. That's the intelligent answer of the day. That was that was great. And I think that was that was really a good word you use role model. I think ever, anyone can have a role model, right? Like even if you live alone, right, your whole life, you've been living on the streets or whatever you can. There's there's. 7 billion people on the planet, you can find someone just to look up and say, you know what, I'm just going to try and be like them type of thing. And I think that's something that's everyone should have. And that's a good first step. So then down the road, we can have those what we talked about coaches, mentors, and all those people that help us. But uh, I hate to wrap this up, man, time just flew by. But uh, uh, is there any way like, I know you've mentioned you help people with type two diabetes and, you know, things like that. What's the best way people can like get a hold of you, reach out to you, or just, you know, they want to chat with you, just kind of get your thoughts on things. What's the best way they can find you? Um, so yes, I'm on, um, I'm on Facebook. Um, it's Phyllis Kamau, um, K-A-M-A-U. And then I'm also on Instagram is um, Dr. Phyllis Kamau Diabetes. Um, so you find me on those two places. I'm also on LinkedIn. Um, so you can find me there as well, Dr. Phyllis Kamau. And I have, and I should extend an invitation. I have actually, I have a webinar um, coming up um, on July 13th next week. That where I'll be teaching. I'll be teaching about uh, diabetes. So I would invite everyone. Just find me on those places and I have the info. All right. Awesome. Yeah. So <clears throat> I challenge you guys, if you anything piqued your interest today you like the discussion we had go check her phyllis out and uh, reach out to her i'm sure she would love to help you out so phyllis thank you thank you for coming on today i've really enjoyed what you had to share today yes thank you for having me here josh i really appreciate the, 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 the time and uh talking to you that was great <laughs> all right awesome so everyone as you can tell that is phyllis kamal she's a very intelligent person has great things to say she dropped the info there if you guys want to reach out to her. I challenge you guys, if you liked anything you heard today, to do that. And see you guys next week. We have a great guest lined up for you guys. And let's get after it. Hey, everyone. If you liked this episode and would like to hear more, be sure to hit that subscribe or follow button. We release a new episode every Wednesday for you guys to listen to. Thank you guys so much for the support that you give. We could not have done this without you guys. If you would like to be a potential guest on the show, check out intelligentconvos.com and fill out the form there. Thank you guys again, and let's get after it.